Claude, GPT and Grok all have amazing models. But if you want to build an AI powered web app that you want to work on choppy connections or even completely offline, you need to check out Transformers.js, a library that downloads and runs AI models inside the browser, like Dino version 3 for object detection, Llama 3.2 for real-time chat, or any of the other models hosted on Hugging Face. But how does this all work? And don't AI models take up a lot of space? Let's get into it. And before we do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Transformers.js from Hugging Face, similar to the Python library, lets you run AI models in the browser, but also on the server with Node.js. It uses the Onyx Web Runtime and Web GPU, if your browser supports it, for super fast, low latency processing without sending data to a remote server, which means it's private and it's also better for the environment. But running an AI model in the browser does have its limitations. For example, you shouldn't run large models, not just because of the space, but also because of the compute demands and the impact on performance. Anyway, we'll get to more of that later. For now, let's go through how you can use Transformers.js. Here is a bun starter project that I'm going to use to build a simple chatbot. After installing Transformers.js, we can go to the Hugging Face website, click on models, click on text generation for our chatbot, then make sure we have Transformers.js selected. We'll pick the most popular model, which is this small LM2 one. Then we'll click on use this model, click Transformers.js and copy this code. I'll then change this name from pipe to generator, update the formatting, and inside this pipeline function, we can add a third argument for the type of quantization we want, which shrinks a model by reducing its precision numbers. Check out this video by Andres for more on quantization. To find that out, let's go back to Hugging Face. We'll click on Files, then look for Onyx. Sometimes the Onyx models are not in a separate folder, but they're listed as a file themselves. In this case, there's a folder, so let's click on that. And over here, you'll see different quantized models. Let's pick Q4, we'll create an object with dtype and we'll give it a value of Q4. From here, we'll add two console logs for debugging, one for when the model is loading and one for when the model has finished loading. We'll then add a system message and user message. And finally, we'll create a variable called output, which will run our generator function with our messages as the argument. And we'll also add an optional argument of max new tokens with value of 512 which limits the number of generated tokens. Finally, we'll console log just the output. Now, if we run our code, it first loads the model and gives us a response as an object inside an array. So let's update the code to address that, ignoring the TypeScript error. And now if we run the code again, we see we get a response with the system and the user prompt and the response from the model. And if you want to see where the model is actually saved, go to node modules, hugging face transformers and in here, there will be a .cache folder and it will contain the directory Hugging Face TB, which you can look into and find the location of the full model. This is really cool, but right now it's not too different from Olama. So let's move this into the browser where things get really interesting. Here is a more detailed project that uses the bun serve command to serve our HTML and JavaScript files. And the HTML file contains a form where you can add the system prompt, a user prompt, and it also contains a submit button. The JavaScript code first runs this initialize form function, which gets the role and message from the form data and passes it to this generate response function, which first loads the model. And this contains similar code to what we've seen earlier. Aside from the addition of the web GPU option, then after that, it creates the message and passes that to the output function which renders the text inside our response element. So with our server running, I can add a prompt, hit generate response, and first it downloads the model before returning a response. And all of this will still work even without Wi-Fi turned off. So if I write a new prompt and hit generate response, I get a completely different answer. Again, if you want to know where the model is saved, you can click on inspect, go to application, find the cache storage option, click on transformers. And if we drag this out a tiny bit, you can see that the small model is saved over here. But you may notice while the model is calculating the response, the whole site is completely unusable. To avoid that, you could create a worker file 
that runs the pipeline function with all the relevant arguments, use it to create a generator, and then pass the output back to the main code as a post message. You could also use the text streamer class, which will stream in text as it's been received from the LLM. And notice you can still interact with the site while data is coming in. This is really easy to set up. Honestly, I'm only just scratching the surface of what you can do with Transformers.js. And personally, I use it all the time to remove backgrounds from images so I don't have to pay for a Canva Pro subscription. It's also a great way to quickly check out new quantized versions of AI models. But let's face it, it's not that amazing for coding. I mean, Starcoder, as great as it is, isn't going to replace Sonnet anytime soon. But I'm sure one day in the future, a quantized version of a model will be close enough to be used as a copilot alternative. Anyway, what do you think about Transformers.js? Is it something you may use in a future project? Let me know in the comments. Again, don't forget to subscribe and until next time, happy coding.